Hi there, it's Diane the Nursing Geek. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are returning. And Happy New Year! Because by the time this goes up, it is going to be 2019, which is just incredible. <laughs> I am very late getting this video done because I was very late getting my bullet journal done. I thought that this video was going to be migrating into a new bullet journal for 2019, but there were actually still quite a lot of pages, like 25 pages left in my current bullet journal. And while I care about keeping semesters together, calendar year isn't that important to me. And the semester doesn't start until late January. I may actually end up splitting January across bullet journals, but that I'm going to deal with later. For right now, Let's take a look at the January setup, most of which is what I usually do. If you So if you've seen it before, you'll see this again. I'll put a timestamp for when I get to the writing related spread, of which I only did one, to track the finishing off of my NaNoWriMo novel and the steps I want to take polishing off this first draft so I can call it a done first draft before I start outlining the next book in February. So with that said, let's get into it. So I decided I actually wanted to start with a spread to capture memories from Christmas because I didn't do any bullet journaling Christmas week. It was just too hectic. So I decided to come up with this little spread just to have a place to capture some memories, maybe paste in some pictures, although I didn't take a whole lot of pictures either. And uh, yeah, I'm using stickers from Planning with Kay. I will link her channel uh, below. Uh, so, yeah, since I didn't take a whole lot of pictures, it may end up being a lot more just written down. Uh, some of which memory is, you know, things like breaking down on the highway on Christmas night and other fun things like that, but that's probably not the main memories I want to capture. <laughs> and I also decided I want a sort of year in review that little hesitation was me deciding, is it year end review or year in review? The, the year in review to just sort of reflect on the year 2018 and sort of take some of that and let that shape how I step into 2019. So I started with what am I most proud of? What is the most important thing that I've learned? And I left a lot more space for that because I had a feeling I have a feeling that it's going to be quite a longer thing that I want to write. And then what do I want to leave behind in 2018 and not bring with me into 2008, uh, leave behind in 2018 and not bring into 2019. And what do I want to bring forward into the next year? Also, where do my 2018 goals stand and what are my 2019 goals? Partly just to make my life a little easier when I do my goals wrap up video next year. <laughs> and now into actually setting up January. For January, I chose Kay's, um, what's this one called? Cold weather, sweater weather, 
sticker kit because while the cold and snow part of winter is by far my least favorite, it is, you know, it's part of winter, I'm in New England, there's, there's going to be snow, there's going to be slush, there's, there's just, it's going to be winter. So might as well find some aesthetically pleasing elements of it. And I went looking for a uh, quote, and I didn't find one that I liked that was specific to January, but I did find one that was specific to snow from a poem by Ruby Archer. Now the sticker kit's colors are sort of pastel-y, um, pink, purple, and blue, which I decided to match with my markers, only to find that, of course, some of the pastels are really, really light and don't show up very well. But hey, all part of the process. Habit Tracker and Mood Tracker are the same as usual, keeping them on the same page and across from the Sleep Tracker so that I can kind of at a glance see how I'm doing at keeping up with my habits, what impact that is having on my mood and my sleep. Um, I guess it's what impact both the habits and the sleep are having on my mood, primarily. Using my same little sort of symbol system so that I don't have to write out every single thing. I did, if you saw the December plan with me, um, where I thought I was going to set uh, 11 p.m. as a bedtime goal. Yeah, that's gone away because that didn't happen, I don't think, even once in the entire month of December. So, yeah, we'll just go back to midnight as a goal. And I'm using the same key, even though um, December ended up looking like an awful lot of dark orange and dark blue, a lot of stressed and exhausted. Um, but I do like having this expanded key that kind of makes me stop and think a bit, okay, was I really stressed? Was I just excited and anticipatory? Because again, what I like the best about the mood tracker is more the reflection that it prompts than the actual data collection necessarily. While it can be useful to see patterns, um, I'm, I really, I keep the mood tracker more just because it makes me stop and reflect because sometimes, you know, you can end up thinking you're stressed out when, okay, there may have been some stress during the day, but it was really a lot more just that sort of anticipatory excitement, which hits a lot of the same adrenaline spots. So yeah, anyway, and now we have the massive <laughs> sleep tracker that I do actually enjoy creating it as well as find it very useful to have the numbers all the way through. But, oh boy, do you ever not want to sit here and watch me write all these numbers. So, yeah, have a lot of skipping. <laughs> and then just a little attempt to uh, clarify what's daytime versus nighttime. And some more cute little snowflakes as decoration before moving on to the next thing, which is going to be my wellness tracker. So I had done one this way before, decided I wanted to fit it all on one page, and after a month of that I decided, nope, this uh, horizontal layout definitely is a little easier to maintain. 
and would be a little easier to um, clarify which things are part of which routine because there's the PT exercises that I got for my knee, which I am continuing with, and then there's the um, the new exercises that have been given to just sort of increase overall strength and whatnot. So I decided to set them up and color code them in such a way that it's easy to see which ones um, belong to which group of exercises as opposed to that mess that I keep flipping back to <laughs> to refer to. Um, And yeah, let's throw in a couple little decorations. I may yet come to regret taking up so much space on that left hand side because I think that's where I'm going to want to take my notes when I go back to see my physical therapist this month. So keeping with the pink, purple, blue theme um, was handy because there are two exercises that overlap both. So they got purple, and the days that I will do one set are in pink, and days that I'll do another set of exercises are in blue, with the purple for stuff that gets done every day. So we'll see how that works. And then just setting up the first week. Still using this sort of weekly setup, it seems to work pretty well. There are definitely weeks where I'm not so sure about having Saturday and Sunday so much smaller than everything else, but for the most part, they do tend to have less stuff that I'm trying to capture. Of course, what's really hilarious about all this sweater and snow themed stuff is that the year started off in the 50s. <laughs> Adding in some hydration trackers from Boho Berry, who I will also link below. For the days that I wasn't going to use a time bar because I wasn't back to work yet, I used the longer um, tracker with the glasses and then the rest of the days the little water bottles. And yeah, if you look at that, don't look at that too closely because apparently I decided that uh, Wednesday the second was not going to have a noon or a midnight for some reason. Yeah. And when I went looking for New Year's quotes, I was thrilled to find one from Mary Shelley, one of, the, one of my favorite authors. Um, the beginning is always today. I thought that was a good way to start off the year. Okay, so here we have my tracking page for my edit process for my NaNoWriMo, which is still going by the working title of whatever it takes. Step one, <laughs> write the ending and then do a full read through. Um, those are definitely the first two things I want to do. If I get nothing else done this month, I will definitely get those. But there are some other things that I think would be useful to do, both for eventually revising this draft and for preparing to outline the next book and checking the timeline for holes and mapping out the character arcs. There's actually some possibility that I may have 
characters that don't need to be there or don't need to be there yet. They might make more sense to show up in a later book in the series. Um, so I need to look at what their character arcs look like and if they're sufficient to make it worth having them there. And then, yeah, I gotta look for plot holes. <laughs> And missing scenes, of which I'm sure there are plenty. Will I get them all written? I doubt it. Will I get them all noted? Let's hope so. And yeah, setting check. My weakest point. I really need to make sure I pay attention to whether my characters are just sort of floating in the vacuum of space or if they actually inhabit, you know, rooms or outdoor spaces or something that the reader can have any idea where they are. And then ideally, once this is all done, another full read through. So that's the checklist so far and just some space for notes that will come to mind in the process for Route 2. Route 2. Book 2. <laughs> so that's it for now. As I say, there will be a migration video at some point when I actually do set up the next bullet journal, which will have probably the last week or so of January and then go into the rest of the spring semester. And some spreads for outlining the next book and other steps that I'll be taking in the journey of this experiment in writing. <laughs> Do you tend to cater about where things break between one journal and the next? Do you care if a month gets broken up across journals? Would that drive you up a wall? <laughs> I'm interested to hear how your organization might be the same or might be different. So please comment down below. And if you have a particular spread that you use for tracking revisions, especially first round revisions, I'd be really interested to hear about that. Please let me know. And if you have a video about it, please link it in the comments because I would love to go see it. And probably other people who happened to stop by here would be interested too. With that said, that is it for now. I hope you're having a great day. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.